Welcome to this quick introduction on how to use Toby Studio and ePrime for collecting eye movement data. In this video, I will use a sample experiment in ePrime available from Toby or PSD. To be able to use Toby Studio and ePrime at the same time, you need to have a two computer setup. One computer running Toby Studio with a video capture card and the other computer with ePrime installed. I will start by setting up the ePrime computer. In ePrime, we first need to set the properties for the ePrime extensions for Toby. So I go to uh, the Object Properties and Devices and choose the Toby Eye Tracker. Here I need to put the name of the eye tracker or the IP address to the eye tracker on the network. I also need to set the IP address to the computer running Toby Studio on the network. To be able to use uh, Toby Studio for doing the analysis, you need to set up ePrime so it sends events to Toby Studio uh, to be able to create scenes. In this case, we need to have a start scene uh, event being sent to Toby Studio. So this is the settings for the start scene. And after a stimulus has been shown, we want to send another event, uh, a stop scene event to Toby Studio. Let us look at the entire project. In this case, ePrime will collect data directly from a Toby eye tracker, but at the same time also send a start scene and stop scene events to Toby Studio, so you're able to cut up the video recorded by Toby Studio into scenes for later analysis. Next, I will be setting up the Toby Studio computer. Make sure that you're able to see the screen from the Toby Studio computer on the eye tracker. Uh, this computer needs to be equipped with a video grabber card so we are able to record the screen from the computer running the ePrime software. In Toby Studio, I'm now just creating a project and a test. This is now an empty project in Toby Studio and I will add the external video stimuli to the timeline. At the same time, if the video grabber card is working, I will see a screen image from my ePrime computer. We are ready now to do a calibration in Toby Studio. So I just create a participant. I do a calibration with that participant, in this case myself. That was the calibration. And I accept the calibration and now I just leave Toby Studio like this. Now it's time for me to go back to the ePrime computer and start the actual test. So make sure that you are showing the ePrime screen on the, comp on the eye tracker screen. So in ePrime I will start the actual experiment. ePrime will now send an event to the Toby Studio computer and tell Toby Studio to start recording. Of course ePrime will also collect my eye movement during this experiment. In this experiment, you can see also a, a gaze contingency, meaning that, that I want to have the participant looking at the fixation cross in the middle of the screen for at least half a second until the experiment continues. It's now time to start the analysis of the data. During the experiment, ePrime collected data directly from the Toby eye tracker and saved it in a, in a .gaze data file, which I can now open up in Excel. In the gaze data file, you can um, see things like the x and y coordinates of the gaze on the screen, but also information on predefined areas of interest. Next, I will look at the data collected by Toby Studio. In Toby Studio, you can go to the replay view and replay a video of the ePrime experiment as it was collected by the video grabber on the, on the Toby Studio computer. So this now shows a video with the participant's gaze. I can also create scenes. Scenes are still images that are being created from this video and these still images can be used for visualizations and for data analysis. I can select to create those scenes automatically based on the events sent to Toby Studio by ePrime. So this is now a scene that was generated based on those events. And as we can see, the video was automatically cut up into scenes 
and those scenes are now available for visualizations, in this case as a gaze plot or as a heat map. Of course, I'm also able to do more statistical analysis of these areas by creating areas of interest. After creating areas of interest, I can also access statistics. In this case, I can look at time to first fixation for the two areas of interest I just created. 